This is a project that I've done before. Um, this is a project I did for Wood Carving Illustrated um, a while back, and I have a video, a full-length instructional video on my website, which I will link below in a bit, uh, but it's just aleclacasse.com. Um, and that's that. Before we uh, get into it, I just wanted to say a bit of housekeeping, uh, and that is really simple. I just uh, basically have a timer going. So um, typically I'll set about you know anywhere from 20 to an hour, 20 minutes to an hour. And today I'm going to go with uh, 45 minutes. So I've got the timer started. And uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to spend for only 45 minutes on this carving. It just means that uh, today I'm going to give it about that much time in terms of kind of the major shapes, blocking the major shapes in. This just keeps me focused. It's not about speed carving, obviously. If it was, I'd be, I'd be going ham right now because I've already uh, lost 30 seconds talking. So... Without further ado, um, let's get into it. Oh, I guess I can wait for folks to join. I'll give it another couple seconds. Um, long enough. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> Restart the timer for this. So I've got a big flat gouge I'm using. Ah, is this going to pull out of the backboard? I think it may. Hey, Noah from Louisiana. Yeah, I think we're going to have one of those situations where the piece frees itself of the backdrop. And that's pretty typical when you're using a shallower screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this inch and, uh, what is it, 5 8 screw with a, something more like an inch and 3 quarters. This is uh, a pretty deep piece of bark, and I think we can afford to go into it. All right, so I've got the longer screw in there. Hope y'all are doing well today. I've really been enjoying the opportunity to do these little live streams and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying watching them as much as I am making them. that part to break off but this is what it is huh let's try get a little more depth in there cool let's see that's probably close to big enough It's 11.30 on a Tuesday, so not many of you are around. So this is a little bit of a slower podcast, but I'm going to play the, oh, excuse me. I'm going to play the uh, podcast here so I can see any comments. All right. Beautiful. Okay. First thing I'm going to do. Set the brim of the hat. I'm gonna mark it first. Just thought of uh, paranoia, just to see how it looks. Because if I go there, we got this part. We got the nose, beard. Yeah, that should be good. So let's do that. Let's set that in. Let's really focus in on this. love to hear where you're from, maybe where you're listening from, or uh, 
where you currently live. Please don't send your address. <laughs> here that don't need to be here so let's clean them off Actually going to turn the face a little bit over to the side here, something like that. Ah, mm, a bit of a chip. That's okay. Back. Like having too many tools in the bunch. Greetings from India, Mahendra. Good to see you. Texas, Christopher's from Texas. Very cool. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. Bless you, your carvings. Your carving of Harry was fantastic. I'm a student of yours, and I'm sure enjoy another Bigfoot carving. Ah, all right, Christopher. Bless you as well, Mahendra. And yeah, um, okay, good to know. It would be cool to do a, another sort of Bigfoot, maybe a different interpretation of it. What's your thought there? Any idea? Be a different 
type of Bigfoot. Would love to hear what you think. take a really quick gander at where the screw is back here because I remember it being well, we're in good shape we're in good shape California Laura's from California yeah absolutely email them Christopher I would love that um, send it to alec at aleclacast.com and the spelling if you don't know it is on the, you know, it's my uh, title, Insta uh, YouTube name here. Should be there, spelling. Alec at aleclacast.com.
Nevada. Nice piece of bark. Fun washing the fluidity of your carving technique. Thank you. That's a very nice compliment. Now that's a sailor that knows his spinach. That's right. Love the live cast. Thanks, Peter. All right, from New England. Where are you from, Tail Dragger? Everyone's talking about where, they, where they're from. Oh, are you at your fellow Michigander, I, I presume? All right. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching the uh, live stream. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Myself over here, that's all. Oh, don't flake off. Oh, no, no, all good, all good in hood. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, they've been up. Anyone been up to anything cool? This, this really is kind of flaky piece of wood, so. South Oregon, all right. Do you use power tools as well? Um, not really. Uh, well, I shouldn't say not really. I have, uh, just not on the bark carvings. Fairmouth, Pennsylvania, very cool. Occasionally, um, I'll use a, a bark tool, or a bark tool, a power tool. Just, you know, on the bark, it's not really necessary. But yeah, big carvings, I'll do um, chainsaw and then I'll use burrs and. Okay. The coloring will go away. It's just a blue. 
The Dragon Lace Festival in Reno would love to see you carve a dragon. Meet GRR native. How cool is that? Can you tell me what GRR stands for? Okay, cool. Yeah, I wondered. Very cool. <clears throat> yeah, a dragon would be neat. I don't know. Never done one. Turkey, all right, beautiful. North Carolina, awesome. I love hearing where people are from. This is good, I'm gonna start asking this more often. time here. It's doing pretty good actually. Is this a specific sale or a reference photo? Uh, no, no sir it is not. It's just uh, yeah it's just somebody I'm making up. It's really kind of a combination of things I've done in the past so with um, in terms of like the design and then the uh, just a little bit of a position difference. His head is turned differently and I mean, yeah, I mean, really, he's a, he's just a free flow exercise kind of thing, kind of loosely based on a, on a piece that I've done in the past, but a fresh, because you don't want to repeat yourself, so try to make things interesting. Get something a little unique, unique, hopefully. cut this hat in a little bit too low.
I'm going to have him kind of almost squinting out, almost as though he's on the open sea and he's looking out into the, peering out into the open sea. <laughs> yeah. Like barely open. I want the eyes to be kind of like squinting. That's a cool idea, a boxer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's not too low, Peter says. It's what we see here on the coast. Cool, cool. Glad to hear that. Let's see, Peter's from New England, so he would know. We don't have as many sailors. Although, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is around fishing in the Great Lakes, but there's got to be some sailors out by the water, huh? Oh, can you hear the rooster? I love, my neighbors are really cool. They have uh, chickens and um, some awesome uh, waterfowl and yeah, they're just, they're, they're really, uh, they've improved the, the atmosphere of the neighborhood when you can hear the, 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 the birds. Yeah, I just think that's awesome. Makes you feel like you're in the country. Excuse my hand. I know I'm getting in the way a lot. It's something I try to avoid doing. There's the tool I was looking for. The uh, road noise is getting a little much for me, so I'm going to close the back door. It's nice to have the fresh air, though. <laughs> You'd need a ball cap to fish the Great Lakes unless it was ice fishing season. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, Doferky. What's up, Paul? <clears throat>
giving him a pretty manly mustache, if I do say so myself. And this guy's got a schnoz on him, too. He's got a schnoz after my own heart.
Now it's Atlantic Fisherman. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, you ever tried Lone Sailor Navy statue? This has to do life size one as Memorial for a friend's son. I can't find any examples. Car from wood. Mm -mm. No, I haven't. Your wife must be away on vacation. This <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, she is in the house, actually. She's just enjoying herself. Reading a book. Actually, I think she's um, seeing a client right now. So. So she's letting me play with my friends. No. I think Taylor Gregor's met this guy. Oh, no. Yeah, this is a tricky spot, this whole area, because of this crack. It's letting moisture in. I just got a little crackage on there. set his eye a little bit deeper which you know it's probably pretty well suited to this guy he's kind of a manly looking he's gonna have a dude he's gonna have a heavy brow so we can kind of get away with that i think I'm just pushing things back in and getting a little more depth Well, that's annoying when that happens, huh? You want all those cracks to happen early on. You want those cracks to get themselves out of their, out of their system early on. But Okay, well, I'm going to bring the level of this down as well. And the reason these eyes are looking kind of weird is because I haven't cut the upper lids yet. So, never fear. Bob's coffee hates mushrooms. <laughs> right, I'm gonna... Yeah, I mean, he loves coffee, that's for sure. I know that for a fact, this guy. I'm not so sure about hates mushrooms. It's possible, though. I mean, it, he seems like the kind of guy who'd be low maintenance, you know, he just wouldn't really care. Just give me whatever. Maybe you're right, you know. You seem to know this guy better than I do. Cut down my upper lid. Daughter says it's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, is it? How do you say your name? Is it Usger? Usger. It appears that working around the issues, the materials during the process is so very key to success in carving. 
Well put, Peter. Yeah, very well put. That is definitely the case. Because it's like, inevitably something will go wrong. And sort of like life, right? All right, I won't, I won't, I won't try to turn that into an analogy into some deep thing. But yeah, being able to adjust to the uh, things that go wrong is definitely, yeah, that's a good point. It's a key. Kind of a handsome dude. Time for an eye patch could be a pirate. <laughs> yeah, it really is so crumbly, Teresa. It's kind of hard to deal with. If you're not used to it, it's like some people really hate it for that reason. I can see why. It's like well behaved, this wood. That head is in the way, sorry. What is your favorite wood to carve? You recently mentioned birch. Is that still the case or does it depend? Well, it's interesting, Teresa, because like I like the look of bark. Uh, sorry, the look of um, birch, uh, but it is, it does not as fast moving a material. Um, you know, so if I want to turn some work, uh, you know, it's way more, it, it's easier to carve in the bark. So for that, I love the bark, but, um, you know, the bark doesn't, the downside of it is that it flakes and breaks like you're saying. So it just depends on the situation. If I had all the time in the world to carve, um, I'd probably carve in birch even more often than I do. Uh, but yeah, they just have different benefits you know, the detail you can that, that birch can hold is pretty much superior to cottonwood bark um, i don't know as far as the look goes the look and the ease of carving definitely bark but you know hard, hard exactly to say all right there's the time there's 45 minutes uh, I might go for the hour. I might go for an extra 15. Um, I'm kind of on a roll with this one. I'm enjoying it. And I think that uh, you guys cool with that? I mean, not everyone has to be cool with that, I guess. You can leave when you want to. So, so I'll go for another 15 minutes. Give them a name. <laughs> oh, who was it that put a fish in the in the beard of one of these sailors? I love that. Just like the tail. That's probably the coolest thing. That's a fun idea. I thought. A little bit dorky, but I like that about it. 
<laughs> it's coming from a dork, so. All right. I'm going to give you guys another uh, angle for what it's worth. Probably not much, but.
I'm gonna move this over just one bit because I can actually. And I'm kind of standing in my spot. Somebody says Doug Linker Doug Linker question mark. Yeah, I could see that. It's uh I could see it looking like Doug Linker. And somebody says Doug Linker is fun to watch. I agree with that. I was telling him the other day that I just like watching his uh I like watching the videos. You can just post you can pretty much just post a video talking into it and I, I would watch it. Just talking to the camera about whatever he did that day. I think we'd all probably watch it and be happy. You know? I accept him on this guy. Thanks, tail dragger. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you ever refine carving so much you wish you would have stopped five minutes? Mm-hmm. Totally, yeah. Why? <laughs> Am I getting there now? Yeah, no, I definitely like some of the carvings with with more roughness to it, and sometimes I don't let myself get the, to that point because I'm too, uh, I don't know, I just get over, I overdo it. Yeah, totally. I'm always weary of that. Sometimes less is more with these, you know, not making everything perfectly real.
just thought of something. This wouldn't necessarily line up. This line. So I can screw it over a little bit. This is my new favorite of your carvings. Thanks, Tail Dragger. The female face emerging from the birch log was my previous favorite. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Yeah, I like that one too. I like the birch one. Uh, wow, that's kind of surprising. This is your favorite one. Bumping. Excuse my bumper. And the timer is up. And yet it keeps starting.
Mena. <laughs> I've never heard that term. Thank you, Peter. He says, it's remarkable what you can accomplish in one hour. Thank you. I'll tell you the live streams really help. Um, again, I don't, I don't think that I would normally, I mean, just, the time limit really helps. I think ultimately, um, <clears throat> just having people watching, you know, wanting to make something good for them to watch that's interesting, kind of pushes you to be more efficient with your cuts. And so, thanks for tuning in. Makes it feel like it's uh, worthwhile, and that, yeah, I don't know, all that sappy stuff, right? Excuse that. Thanks for watching, for liking, for following. All the stuff that you do on YouTube makes a big difference. I've got an online school. I'll post it in the description after this video is posted. It's just on my website, alcocast.com. You can find it in any of the other descriptions and videos that I post. And I teach about how to make a sailor in depth and all the proportion, the symmetry, you know, how I get, how I set the face up in the piece and all that. And the project is also featured in the magazine, We're Carving Illustrated. You can pick that magazine up and uh, see that project in there as well, along with many other great projects that they have. But anyway, I'm not getting paid to promote them. I just uh, I like them. And they're uh, been very supportive over the years. So. may have been wrong. Please no sanding on this piece. The time at sea will be erased. Ooh. I love it. Good feedback. Good feedback. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, leave it rough. I think you're probably on to something there, Peter. Or Robert. Sorry, Robert. Mm -hmm. Love the feedback, by the way. Please, please, please. Always send the feedback. I can always dismiss it if I don't want to hear it, but I always really want to hear it. I guess I mean, if I don't agree with it, I can dismiss it, but yeah, thanks for that. Good idea. Yeah, I do try to be minimal with the sanding on some of the older guys, but it's a good thought. Okay, there's his neck cap. His neck. Man, it's a fantastic day out there. It's a beauty, 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 beauty day. The weather is perfect. It's warm, but not too warm. The sun is out. In Michigan, these kind of days are sort of numbered, so we extra appreciate them. So we have a lot of cloudy days out here. So we're just grateful when we have a nice one like this one. High of 80. Beautiful weather. Beautiful weather.
Let's go ahead down a little bit so that the eyebrows stay in the way. Poo, poo, poo. Lots of neck beard so far. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy don't have no time to trim his beard. What do you think he's doing? beard. And I could get fancier with the beard detail, but maybe I'll leave it kind of simple, kind of rough and simple. A little bit more depth in here. guys think about getting him some nostrils on so he can breathe. Breathing is very important. There you go. I'm gonna find a little skew if I can. Thanks, Carol. Um, <clears throat> over an hour now. It's probably been, I don't know, an hour and ten. Or however long this live stream is, is how long it took. 70 minutes. Yeah, an hour and ten. Good guess. Pipe would be good on him, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. Son of a gun. Somewhere I've got a pipe floating around, a little mini one. I can't remember if I gave it to Doug or something. Somebody. A little mini pipe floating around here somewhere. Ah, it's all right. Another day. Find another day. Um, finish the carving, Teresa's asking. Um, I'll use a, I'll use, I'll use a, um, no, it just really depends. Lately I've been using a matte poly, um, which is, uh, it's called a dead flat and it's, uh, very, very minimal, which I like. Uh, so probably end up using something like that on this one just because I don't like the look of oily shiny anything I don't want it to look like it's got a finish coat on it so
Hey, Greg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can definitely stabilize the wood with a thin super glue. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't, it's just not as nice to carve. So I'll strengthen a weak area. I've done that many times. But um, I don't usually like soak a whole carving because it kind of makes it difficult to carve. And that's no fun. Oh, after the carving is complete. Oh, okay. Um, that's a really good question. I don't know how you would thin the glue enough to where it become a finish. It'd probably be shiny. 
But yeah, a good fit, a wood finish, like a polyurethane, will stabilize the wood. Which is another good reason to put a clear coat on a piece of uh, cotton bar, because it's such a fragile material to begin with. It's really going to benefit the structure of the wood to clear coat it. With a hardening finish. Hat details in. I'm not sure if it was just on my end, but the, it went out for just a moment, so sorry if I lost the signal there. Should be back now?
Oh, thanks, Carol. She says, I have carving books from three different people. Face carving books from three different people. And I think you explain things better than any of them. Looking forward to buying your books. Thank you. Tried, ever tried painting a completed work using lifelike shades? Hmm. No. Um, yeah, maybe once. No, but that's, uh... Maybe that, maybe that would be cool. Maybe that'd be creepy. Who knows? Yeah, I know. He's pretty close to being done. Um, give you another view really quickly. And uh, yeah, I had fun making him. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on him. sea shanties when I see that face. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. And uh, per, uh, per Robert's request, not going to sand it. I think that's a good call on his part. Always appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, love, love doing this. Love making these. I'm going to keep tuning in pretty regularly, I think, at least, until uh, somebody, somebody prohibits me from doing so or I busy with other things, which is very possible as well, so, but, uh, thanks for tuning in, and, uh, who knows, maybe I'll even see you later today with another live stream, it's possible, I'm getting, getting into the weeds of carving, lots, lots of projects ahead of me, so, talk to you. Thanks, Murky, thanks for doing, yeah, thanks, Peter, appreciate your appreciation for it, so, okay, guys, thanks for liking, thanks for watching, and, uh, subscribing and all that stuff. Check out the school in just a minute when I uh, add it to the link below to learn more about carving. Okay, specifically faces. There he is. All right. Bye, guys. See you later.